good to go. Okay. Thanks, Jamie. Oh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Katie Chastain. I'm one of the ontologists with Semantic Arts. And um, Bill has gone through great efforts to help get us both the update to um, units and measurements for the just 13 release from a couple months back. And he's also got a bunch of reference data to, that you can use alongside of the new model in the ontology. Um, and I'm here mostly to introduce the reference data itself. So let me share my screen with my presentation real quick. Oops. Can everyone see slideshow? You can see the slide, but not the slideshow mode. Oh, it's not showing the uh, full screen? That's correct. Interesting. All right. At least not for me. You can do that little trick slideshow mode. You know what Dave does? Custom, let's see, slideshow settings. Yeah, this then, is. Uh, uh, go to side to go to side slideshow and then slideshow settings. We can do. How about this? Oh, that works. Oh, I see. You're not going to do the animation. Yeah, it it wasn't it wasn't working. See if I does this work? If I say start from first slide, does it look any different now? Looks fine. Okay. But, but it's not. It doesn't look like it's. Oh. It's not in slideshow mode, but we can see it. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Do you have animations that you care about or no? Um, no, not for this one. Okay, well, let's just carry on then. I'm using a uh, LibreOffice and I haven't, or LibreOffice Impress, and I haven't presented from this before. So apologies, everyone. Um, so just a quick overview. Um, I'm going to give a brief review of uh, the new model for units and measures. Phil has done some fantastic presentations already for um, going over that in more detail. Um, I believe we have those on previous Just Forum YouTubes available if you want to dig into those a little bit later. I'll give a brief tour of the reference data and sort of describe how uh, the intent for how to use that. Uh, we're going to compare it to the QUDT reference data, and then I've uh, left some time for questions and feedback, um, ideas for how you might use it, the reference data, and so forth. So to get started, this is sort of the standard pattern that we've made for magnitudes. If we want to say we have a patio with an area of 144 square feet, you have the, the patio and it has a magnitude which is some, some sort of measurement. And then we have the aspect of that magnitude, in this case is area. We have the, the actual value, 144, and the unit of measure that we're using here, square feet in this case. So the magnitude um, is sort of defined, it tells us what it is by the aspect. In this case, it's area, which tells us it's, you know, the area of the patio and not, for example, it holds 144 people. Um, and so we need a way to say that the, the area can be measured in square feet. <clears throat> and we do this with unit groups. So we have aspects, which is the measurable characteristic in this example, the area. Uh, other things include volume or velocity or uh, monetary per duration is one that we've added. Uh, for example, dollars per hour, how much uh, you're, you're paying, say, an intern. Um, and a unit group is a collection of those units of measure that can all be used to measure the same aspect. And the units are the standard amount that we use to describe uh, those those measurements. Yeah, that's an older slide. The ah. properties aren't quite. <laughs> the property names have, have changed. Like has member is the other way around. Uh, right, right. Is member of. Is member of the, so the unit of measure is now a member of the unit group. Yeah, and an aspect has a unit group. Okay. Um, and Katie, hmm? Katie it, it might just be worth mentioning. Yeah, you can use this slide that this is the big change from you know the well, the previous one or the next one. Mm -hmm. But the if you could go to the previous one, um, the big change from just 12 to just 13 was putting the area 
into the magnitude. So in just 12, the magnitude was a numeric value with the unit of measure. We have now put aspect inside the magnitude. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Uh, if the patio has different types of areas, like uh, a surface area and a roof area or a wall area, whatever, uh, how would these different kinds of areas which apply to the same object be represented? Um, I'm, I can get to that actually in the next couple of slides. Uh, I said I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Okay. That's okay. It's a great question though. Yeah. Um, so just briefly with the, the, we have our unit group. So here in this case, we have units that measure the area um, and we relate them all back to the international system of units, which in this case, uh, we're based on the meter. And so in, we have a square foot and uh, conversion factor to bring that back to square meters. And uh, if you've got other units that you want to add, like um, I believe they measure sometimes uh, Japanese apartments in mats, as in like the area of the tatami mat. So how many mats is your apartment? You can, uh, if you have the conversion factor for that, you can convert that to square meter as well. And this is to, excuse me, to facilitate conversion um, even between other um, if you wanted to go square foot to mats, then uh, you would go by way of square meter with the conversion factor for both of them. And so we have a bunch of different unit groups and the aspects that they measure. Um, you can see under amount of data that um, you have just sort of exponential, um, you know, your bytes, your gigabytes, your kilobytes, your terabytes. Um, in other cases with the molar refractivity, um, liter per mole and cubic meter per mole, which are essentially um, liter and cubic meters sort of synonymous in that case. And so depending on your application and your perspective, um, you can use which one uh, makes most sense. And then in uh, angle, there are a bunch of different ways um, that would require sort of conversion factors between them that are more complex, such as degrees and radians. And so, um, These are, um, sorry, uh, collections essentially of the unit groups. So if you want to look at all of the units that measure torque, you can see um, the unit group for torque and it will come back with um, the, uh, again, the arrows would be the other direction. The dyne meter is a member of the unit group for torque, foot pound force and Newton meter are the same. And now to answer um, Yakov, is that your name? Sorry, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing Yakov's question. Um, we also have uh, disciplines that are connected to these aspects. So the discipline is an area of interest or field of study, and you have um, certain things that you're commonly using in that field. Um, for example, we have finance here um, to bring up a set of relevant aspects uh, specifically for finance, such as accounts receivable turnover, average total assets, current liabilities, um, and you would use those maybe more in this case than you would use, um, that, like this, for example, the patio area. And so if you have a uh, discipline for, say, um, roofing, um, an aspect there would be the area of the roof, or um, if you're looking at surface area, it, that, there would be an aspect for surface area uh, associated with your discipline. And then the they're connected because they can both be measured using the same unit group. Does that make sense? 100%. Where do we put the aspect into the graph? Um, these are all individuals from the reference data. Um, we have a, a set of 1700 units of measure, what they measure, which is the aspect and the disciplines that use them. And so these are all individuals that um, we've provided in the reference data. You can add to them as needed. Um, I think I saw some hands up, sorry. Mm -hmm. Thanks. My hand is uh, up, Yeah, Michael. this is Phil. I have my hand okay. up. Um, I just wanted to <clears throat> mention that we started with a list of disciplines from QUDT, mm -hmm. and um, 
Linux don't have that. It was from an older version of QUDT. Apparently, they don't maintain those anymore. Mm -hmm. But then we um, refined it to try to um, simplify it. There were some things that seemed a little, uh, what's the right word, more abstract than they needed to be. So mm -hmm. they're, they're about 20 right now. And I wouldn't recommend adding uh, lots of disciplines because then it gets harder to find things by discipline mm -hmm. because a lot of things could, uh, if you start adding a lot of them, then um, it's, you, I guess you could relate them to all, but it, it, it gets a little tricky to, to manage. Mm -hmm. so, so I think the original question was, what if you want roof area? Uh, that would be a separate aspect. Uh, wouldn't necessarily. Uh, uh, you wouldn't necessarily add a, a discipline, uh, you know, associated with that. And I think Michael, did you also have your hand up? Yeah, there's one thing that hasn't been mentioned yet, is and that's the hierarchy of aspects. So for distance, the highest level aspect is something called distance, and then sorry, area, and then if and then if you have specific kinds of area like roof area or other kinds of area, then you can create those as essentially sub aspects, and they point to the higher level aspect with the property that we created called just broader, and that's how you would represent roof area and mm. other kinds of areas. Is that correct, Phil? You could verify that. Uh, yeah, you, you can do that. And there's another way to do it, which is just always uh, relate things directly to the unit group, um, which makes the queries a little simpler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so for the okay, thank you very much for all the answers, uh, and I think we will get uh, I will get a more detailed view on this as the presentation goes on. Let's now see how things fit together, and thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So the reference data has about seventeen of these units of measure. So, sorry, seventeen hundred units of measure. Their aspects and their disciplines. Um, as Phil mentioned, he started with um, QUGT uh, and added on to that. So um, we also pull from the International System of Units brochure, um, unified code for units of measure, and um, some that we've added uh, for our own purposes as well that um, we believe will be useful, um, including finance is uh, one of the primary ones there for accounting and so forth. Um, we also have sort of a, a starter set that is more of an abbreviated list of um, disciplines and aspects, um, leaving out some of the things like probably molar refractivity is going to be um, not as widely applicable as, you know, say area and so forth. And so we have a, a smaller, more manageable set. And then um, you can add to the units uh, and the aspects, Michael described as the aspects. Um, you can relate them to sort of the broader with the gist broader um, to add additional more specific aspects for your particular use case and um, units again also you can add to um, you can add them to the relevant unit group to make sure that it is um, you're able to use that for the particular measurement you want so um, I did some work for a little bit with um, lake science limnology, and uh, they use acre feet, which is um, area of an acre down to a depth of one foot. So it is a unit of volume. Um, so to add that in, um, just specify that it is a unit uh, is with a unit group for volume, and come up with the conversion factor, which I forget offhand, but for sort of limnology um, and data set. And application, um, you can you can add as needed uh, to the unit groups. And then we also have a separate file. Sorry for the red squiggles in uh, edit mode, but um, we have a separate uh, reference file for just currencies to go with the financial data. Um, and then we also have a smaller starter set of those. 
Um, so you can see here we have uh, you, this is a uh, US dollar as an example, and we have a unit group for monetary value, which would include all of the other currencies. And then we also have a separate unit group, monetary value per duration, which is again, um, you know, just basic example dollars per hour for cost of running something, paying your intern and so forth. So this is some of the, the financial that we added. And we have a smaller starter set of um, these as well. Yeah, a um, couple of hands up. Oh, sorry, I can't see them, so. Okay, so I had mine up. In the example, acre foot or something like uh, watt hours per mile, you know, for electric car efficiency. Um, the um, GitHub repository includes some Sparkle that lets you take existing units and uh, put them together to create a new unit. So you don't have to manually calculate the conversion factor for uh, acre foot. You mm -hmm. can just plug in, okay, I want to use acre, which is existing. I want to use foot, which is existing. It's um, just a multiple of, you know, those two, and it'll uh, do all the calculations for you. And then will it spit out triples? Or... Uh, yes. Cool. So it's a construct. Nice. <laughs> and um, actually, real quick, Phil, is have we set the um, repository with these public yet, or is that um, coming yes. soon? Yes. Okay. It's public. It's okay. Public. Cool. Um, so I can provide a link to that uh, at the end. <clears throat> There still hasn't been a first release of that positive of that uh, project, has there, Bill? Uh, we haven't we're made a formal release, we're but we're still it is on the develop branch. Oh, there is a main branch, and it it has the latest. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So um, I don't know if it's, it's a formal release, but yeah, it, it's mm -hmm. you know ready for people to start poking around. And, okay. You should probably make a release, but that's another topic. I was just wondering, so suppose you are making a new unit of measure by hand without one of these queries of yours that would produce it. How do you know which unit you need to create the conversion factor to? Uh, you take the, exist the units that you have and um, look at how they're composed um and actually each one of them has a little equation that says you know one acre equals point uh, you know whatever it is uh, so many uh square meters um uh, one foot equals so many meters and then oh, uh, you can just multiply those equations together and get the answer oh so so the the standard unit then is kind of just in the annotations Yes, it's in a scope note. Yep. Okay. Or I guess you could also look for the unit that has a conversion factor of one. Um, well, you could do that too. And, mm -hmm. and there can be multiple. Oh, there can be multiple. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions right now? Sorry, again, I can't see the hands at the moment. Nope. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I've been talking about this QUDT that stands for Quantity Units, Dimensions, and Types Ontologies. It's a set of ontologies, um, and we pulled from that to uh, generate the reference data, a lot of the reference data, they have uh, an open source selection um, with tons and tons of the disciplines and aspects and their units. Uh, their website is just uh, qudt.org. They have the information there. Um, but we've made changes, updates um, for, from that to improve upon it for the GIST use case for the uh, to match up with GIST. So, um, one of the major additions is the idea of a unit group to help aid in the data management. Again, as uh, we were discussing earlier, if you want to add a new unit, you have the unit group available um, if you know what you want it to measure um, so that you can add, say, your acre feet to the volume unit group. 
Uh, it also follows a simpler structure. Our just units and measures follows a simpler structure. QUDT is a whole set of ontologies. Um, and so they have a bunch of import statements between them. And um, as we have sort of consolidated everything into the um, ontology part, which is in just itself and then now we have this reference data which is in some separate files so you don't need um, as many import statements um, we have the exponents um, which are the uh, factors uh, you know meters and square meters um, they're on the units rather than the dimensions so we have again meters and square meters as opposed to um, i guess length and square length for area and so forth um, we've also added the financial metrics and uh, some process metrics for uh, accounting in particular and some other related fields. And also QUDT makes use of a lot of abbreviations. Uh, so we've expanded upon those in just units and measures to help uh, with uh, clarity there. And some stats on QUDT, it's a much larger ontology. Um, they have many classes. You can see the numbers here, and a lot of them uh, we looked like they weren't being used. Um, so we only really have, uh, as earlier, the sort of basic set of these relations here to represent the magnitudes, whereas QUDT is much more complex. So we've sort of distilled that down. And sorry, where am I? So that's interesting. QUDT defines both RDFS class and RDF properties and also OWL classes and properties. It mixes them. Yep. Mm. That's crazy. Or does it double up maybe? <laughs> well, it look, you know, it, it looks like a lot of people contributed. Mm -hmm. There wasn't mm. a real tight governance um, and uh, there, mm. there is a lot of stuff in there that's sort of what you might call loose ends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you back yeah. up a slide, Katie? Um, this one? And I think the one after. Oh, here. The, the 109 not used for properties and also classes is peculiar coincidence. Does anyone have any idea why that number would be the same? <laughs> is I think it is a coincidence. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was odd. I checked, double checked. <laughs> I got the same thing the second time around. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Here's just um, from the QUDT site. This is uh, sort of a structure, how they structure their ontologies. And each of these is a separate ontology. So, this is how you get um, the lots of import statements between them. And I imagine this is also where the um, the the usage of RDF and OWL class and so forth happens. Uh, different people working on different um, sections of this. So it's become a bit more scattered. But, um, that is sort of the basic overview describing our reference data. I can um, get the link to our repository with the reference data available. Um, as Phil said, it sounds like it's good to go now. Um, and so I wanted to open the floor to uh, questions, feedback, comments. And if you need me to go back to a particular slide, let me know. Um, either Katie or Phil, do you want to speak to um, our future plans for putting up um, to making to putting up a Sparkle endpoint or sort of a small application to make the reference data available uh, by query rather than by searching through files. Just that it's on the to do list. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there, it's not scheduled, so and I'm not sure exactly where it's prioritized. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sure in the status of that either, but it's something that we would like to do. Mm -hmm. Actually, we could gather requirements. Anyone in the audience who has some inkling to use this and they want to go grab some units, what would make it easy for you? Uh, 
I'll go ahead and stop sharing so I can see everyone's lovely faces and hands up. <laughs> so the uh, the repository um, that Katie's referring to that that has this data has some queries, um, but I I guess I got to add it. At a, at a minimum, if you know which units you're interested in, you know, we do have a query that would uh, let you take a list of units. And if you also want to restrict uh, to certain aspects, give that list as well. And it it uh, puts together the whole uh, package that has all those intermediate uh, concepts. Do you want so, to, we've got one hand up, but do you want to do a quick walkthrough of that? repository and the queries just to sure let me share but this again in the real meantime quick. Yaakov has his hand up I can wait after the uh, walks through the repository all right um can everyone see the github window I can make it mm -hmm. a little bigger yep uh, so we have the data folder, which includes we have you can see currency and the reference data and also these uh, starter sets, which are the sort of abbreviated. Um, ones and let's see, will it show the entire file? But as you can see, there's there's a lot here. For the full. And then um, the queries that we were talking about, we have uh, for constructing new units. Unit of measure and then um, member of the unit group. And then uh, there's a demonstration here adding the a fictitious unit called the smoot. Yeah. Um, you can modify as needed. Um, we have exponents of the various uh, SI units, ampere, bit, candela, kelvin, kilogram, meter, mole, number, other, radian, second, stair radian, and US dollar, um, where this would be, it, um, yeah, your exponent, if you're just measuring length, exponent of meter would be one, uh, and all of the others would be zero. Uh, if you're measuring area, the exponent of meter would be two and the others would be zero because they're measuring in square meters or some conversion of square meters. And there's also, let's see, search by exponents lets you, again, if you want to search, this one example has everything that's uh, exponent of one for kilogram and zero for everything else. So this would measure anything measured in kilograms. And you can change these numbers to sort of explore as you like. And then a couple other basic queries for showing the aspects used by a particular discipline. Um, with the earlier example in the slides with uh, finance, you could search for that particular discipline here and it, this would return all of the aspects and so forth and uh, demonstrates the conversion where you have to make sure uh, you're converting two units that are both in the same unit group. So it is um, possible and logical to uh, convert them and then it will get the conversion factor from one it essentially goes with um the uh, the base unit as an intermediary so it would go square feet to square meters um to i guess mats as you know the earlier example so it wouldn't go directly from square uh, square feet to mats it would convert to square meters and then to the other destination um unit um, let's see, Phil, are there any other ones of these that I should highlight? Not really. He's written some fantastic notes in this. Should be explained and walk you should through. Be pretty straightforward to mm -hmm. just pick up one of the queries and run it and see what you get and play around with uh, different inputs. Mm -hmm. Just just a, a note. Um, if if you remember that original very simple slide that said, you know, uh, the magnitude of the patio that 
gives its area uh, has the the area, the unit of measure, and the quantity, the numeric value. Um, <clears throat> area, as Rebecca said, is attached to the magnitude now. And in the past, we didn't have any guidance about uh, exactly how you would do that, or we may have, we, we, we may have, but we found that even in our internal data, there are lots of different ways to think about it and lots of ways to represent it. You, you could you know, say that area is a category. You could say that area is a subclass of magnitude. Um, you, you could use a property called has area. And so um, the data conversion uh, involves seeing how have I represented all my aspects and then converting from that to that one standard um, way of representing it. Mm -hmm. yeah, here's uh, an example yeah. of uh, some of the different ways it may have been represented. Magnitude type area, patio has area magnitude categorized by has aspect. Yep. So the, the conversion can be fairly involved. And the other the other point is, I think the units are very standard. I mean, you know, uh, a, a meter, a meter squared, a foot, an inch. Everybody uses those pretty much uh, the same way. Uh, but aspects are probably very enterprise specific. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, if uh, do a little planning and decide, um if you if you want to have all the aspects in the same namespace it's probably your namespace not uh the the uh, namespace that we have in the reference data for the units i think it's it's probably okay to use the uh just the namespace and you know we'll we'll add units in as they crop up and people need them Uh, Yakov, sorry, you've had your hand up for a minute. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, yes, it's exactly the right point for me to ask a question after the previous question. Um, now, maybe I am asking a very obvious question over here for all the ontologists. I am, my background is a computer programmer, and I am attracted to um, the data-centric approach and ontologies by a promise to break down silos and have sort of an automatic understanding between different groups that we use the same uh, representation of data and we don't have to manually integrate data again and again. And I just want to verify what, what I'm seeing over here is that there's some kind of, from my point of sort of disappointment, that we really are not there that we have a technology which allows groups around the world to automatically connect their data to each other. But there is a lot of friction over here which can arise if two groups independently model similar things. So what I see, for instance, over here, I, I just want to ask a few questions because I see the frictions correctly or whether I'm sort of not seeing solutions which are there. So if, on one hand, we see if we have an effort of QIDT, which people do a lot of work, and we have the effort in GIST. And after I see that you made your improvements on QIDT, I see, I, I believe the two ontologies are not automatically co compatible anymore. So they are very similar and you can, you can create connections between them. It's not so difficult, but it requires, if you wanted to, if you would have one ontology in QIDT, another ontology in GIST, uh, we need a programmer or we need an ontologist to uh, to tie them together. It's not something automatic. Maybe I'm missing a point over here. Uh, also, what I see as a programmer, that if the work on QIDT continues or they add special units which are important just for one use case, they're not automatically in, in GIST. And to me, have a situation where I want something as clean as GIST. And so I'm say, well, I can't use QIDT because it's complex and I want to use GIST. But at the other point, maybe some data is in QIDT and it's not in GIST. And may, uh, so I have sometimes difficult trade-off decisions to make. And 
so, so I have, and also I see that even within the world of GIST, there are still different ways of representing the same data. So we still could have a, a possibility of two organizations use GIST and still represent their units in slightly different uh, forms. Now, still because it's all on the same foundations, conversions are not very difficult or not as difficult as it could be, but it's still, do I see it correctly that we, we are not yet at the holy grail of uh, connecting even standard measures? We still have to make a sort of one uh, organization has to make their decisions in order that they're internally consistent with, with themselves. And once we connect an outside organization, we have to make some mappings over here. Do I see it correct or did the, the over exaggerate the, the frictions which we still have in the understanding each other? That's was a long question, I'm sorry. No, so, no, no, no. Uh, good question. It's a bit of a dilemma, isn't it? Um, because my question is, is it, is it still, do we still have essentially the same dilemmas that different separate data sets do not really understand each other automatically, but we made a lot of progress that the work is much easier than it was before, and a big organization is capable of with a realistic effort to make a standard for them. And if you have two separate organizations and they both base the standards on the same organization, we have some translations and they're manageable. It's sort of, it's much easier than it was before, but we yeah. haven't yet solved the problem. Yeah, we do have the, uh, for each unit of measure, there's a reference to the QUDT. Uh, unit. Uh, so that linkage is not complicated because I think the, the units are are very standard. They're just, you know, mostly physical units in QUDT. Um, as far as the aspects go, I think that's very uh, enterprise specific. And I think mm -hmm. um, if you look at how QUDT suggests extending uh, their data set for your own use, uh, same kind of problem arises. Of, uh, you know, any anything you do within just an enterprise will uh, not necessarily connect to the rest for for things like aspects. So uh, we have Could always. I I I. I I kind of agree with your assessment. It's like, well, just uh, creating ontologies doesn't mean you get any kind of uh, interoperability unless you plan for it that way. So mm -hmm. uh, within semantic arts, we're, we're mainly focused at the enterprise level. Um, we, we, we haven't taken on the whole globe yet. <laughs> okay. And, uh, uh I would add, I I think that the whole semantic disciplines and technologies get us closer to the Holy Grail, but we are still a ways away. Mm -hmm. um, One thing that I mentioned, what, what a point Phil mentioned, which is not, which is better than I thought. Phil said, we have actually the data in there, sort of, we have the links between the two ontologies that when a, an ontologist as a programmer wants to make the connection, he doesn't have to go one by one through all of the uh, data points, but it, it, it's manageable. So you, you can write a program, you can write a, a, a query which connects these two, but uh, so sort of it's a work of a few hours of a programmer to connect these two, ontolo uh, to two of those ontologies as opposed to uh, a, a year's or effort of uh, tying all the different pieces together. So it got much easier, but it's not yet solved the problem. And also, um, just has the very simple model with the um, the magnitude that has the aspect, uh, the 
unit and the numerical value, which is meant to be sort of, you know, universally applicable. You can do that no matter what you're measuring, even if it is in, you know, some peculiar enterprise specific unit of measurement. Um, and so sort of like that base structure is going to be the same across everyone who uses GIST. And, um, you know, we provide essentially the, the sort of baseline, like here's a whole bunch of things that are very commonly used, like area and, you know, momentum, and velocity and so forth. And um, but when you uh, build up what you need for your specific data needs and your specific use case, um, there's sort of like the baseline. Here's um, a, a way to represent it and mm -hmm. then you can build on that as necessary. Does that, mm -hmm. does that make sense? It's sort of providing like the baseline model and then you say, okay, you know, we need this, this aspect that's not in the reference data already, but if you need something simple like meters or square feet, then the reference data sort of provides that predefined for you. What I see over here, Vedi, which you point out is that GIST is a you as an organization made the effort that it's clean and simple so that anybody uses GIST. So if, if you have two teams, one is using GIST, the other team is, to, uh, team is using QAOT, then the GIST team, the team which is using GIST has less work. So because you're basing on a, on a better foundation, and also you said we have the confidence that whatever measure pops up in the world, it will fit in. And if you say with the argument of Phil, if this work has been added to QADT or some other ontology, uh, we probably can write a script to make the con uh, conversion as opposed to doing all the work. So uh, given all the trade-offs and all the frustration, which I could say that of not having been at the Holy Grail, but I could say that the GIST has put in a lot of work to be uh, as close to the Holy Grail as possible. and to make it as easy as possible to to add whatever you need. So if I, I really value the work, I'm not saying it's not, uh, I'm just saying there is still some gap to get to the uh, to the final, final, final mine. But it's very, sort of, it, it, I see as uh, very much, it came out very clear sort of the value which just added ontologically on top of the uh, data which was there before. So the, the organization makes a lot of sense and it's very important. Thank you very much. Um, so I just want to be a stickler and contradict something Phil said a few minutes ago, which is that uh, the terms of our license do not actually allow you to define terms in one of our namespaces, either GIST or GIST D, which is where we now have the reference data. Right. So the recommendation would be is if you have new reference data for your own use, you can put it in your own namespace and you are free to submit a PR to our reference data. In other words, proposing that those um, new units of measure or aspects be incorporated into the body of our reference data, in which case they would then take on the GISD namespace. But without that, your our license does does not allow you to define those terms in our names. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I may not have been clear about that. We do welcome uh, additions, but you can't drop it into our repository on your own. <laughs> so well, no, is, but even, there's some governance there. But even for your own use, well, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I and, think... and don't just define something and put it in the just namespace yeah. or the just D namespace. Yeah. Uh, actually, I have seen that done already. <laughs> yeah, th there should be um, protections on the repository branches so that not anybody can push to develop in main. I assume you've got those in place. Can yeah, we set those up, Phil? Okay. You done, Rebecca? Yeah. Oh. So just a quick comment um, to Yakov. You talked about yes, it's possible to write scripts so that if new so if there's a new batch of you know 17 different units in QDT that you want. Yes, you can write a script, but I think what Phil has done, he already has that script written because that's where the current just reference data came from. He wrote a script and brought it over. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of rewriting that script, I would imagine. Is that correct, Phil? 
Um, yes, the original uh, forklift of the data was um, many <laughs> months ago, and uh, I yes it would simplify it quite a bit as opposed to doing it manually mm -hmm. thanks for the comment so i see so i see th there is a problem but there is a lot of work done to make the problem as small as possible and as manageable as possible and it's quite possible that today one ontologist can handle that for who will organize or enterprise all the uh, requirements uh, but you still need some so it, it the work it got much easier and that's important mm -hmm. one clarification <clears throat> so phil correctly pointed out that um, aspects mostly are specific to an enterprise until they're not across the board <clears throat> relevant to everybody. But there is an exception to that. Every unit group has at least one aspect that's completely that corresponds to the standard unit. So in other words, the unit group for measuring distance has meter. And meter <clears throat> is both an aspect, but also it's something that's completely independent from any enterprise. So kind of like the top level aspect for each unit group is in fact independent of every enterprise and it corresponds to system international units as you say that's accurate phil it's it's close to accurate i think um yeah 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 there there are um yeah uh key, um the international system of units for example has has a lot of standard aspects um and those are pretty um those are pretty fixed but within in within an enterprise you have a lot of specializations of those so my comment was that if you start using the gist uh reference data aspects and then you add a lot more you you have a choice you you can either um have some of them in the just d namespace and some of them in your own namespace or you can just plan from the beginning i i want them all in my own namespace otherwise as you're writing queries and things you have to always remember gee which namespace is this one in Yakov. Okay, now I want, I'm not sure as whether it is uh, off topic or whether it's not off topic. I want to say that this whole idea of measurements as multiplying units and converting numbers by multiplying factors, it works across the system almost everywhere, but there's one area which is very different and very, very messy. And I just want to put it on the table and you can decide whether you want to discuss it when you say, no, that's not, not for here, which is, uh, that's the topic is time. So this, uh, there are many reasons that measuring time in human terms is completely messy. So that if you have uh, uh, seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, years, and you have time zones and all the uh, leap seconds, leap, leap days, leap years, and there are assumptions, so say, on their weeks also. And they're all not matching with each other because uh, so, uh, and there are also sort of assumptions that in some calendars you have exactly 12 months per year, but there are also calendars where you have uh, sometimes a leap month and, uh, and ways, uh, efforts of standardization of the time measurement for human purposes uh, usually work by excluding certain certain needs of people. Sort of, if you don't uh, if you don't care about people in China, then you can standardize things. But then people in China will make their standard because they need something else, and they will exclude uh, maybe American needs because what's important for them, whatever else. So maybe you can say all this mess for measuring time. Uh, is not part at all of this discussion, in which case I just 
uh, keep quiet. Uh, or you could say, well, there is an open end over here and it just has some kind of structures which help for them or need some kind of structures which are not yet there. So to my question is, how does, do you relate to the messiness, the deep messiness of, of measuring time as an organization? Uh, it, it, the, the kind of messiness that you described, we really haven't focused on or, you know, not for this effort. Um, pretty much took whatever was in QUDT and <laughs> moved it over. So a year, for example, um, they might have some variations on it, um, but, you know, I, just the, I, the concept of a year, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily translate to uh, seconds very cleanly, right? But maybe the year is the one which most easy converts to, to seconds. But if you talk about a month and uh, yeah, right. month. they are, if you speak also about localization of time, sort of what's current time at some point, it's sort of, uh, so you're saying it's off topic for this effort. It's not something which uh, which you did, uh, which you concerned over here. Is it something off topic for GIST just at all? Or is it something I, at a different corner of the I would, ontology? I wouldn't say it's off topic, but I, I would say we haven't tried to tackle it in the reference data. Mm -hmm. I think the, um, you know, I think enterprises usually resolve this internally in some way, you know, that an enterprise will settle on ways of dealing with time and that a structure general enough to capture all the variations would be very complex. Whereas, you know, for a given enterprise is usually a more straightforward way to do it. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, a sort of see also annotations in the um, reference data that will point to, um, and often cases like I see Jonathan posted the uh, calendrical calculations from Wikipedia or um, dictionary definitions. So just sort of a see also this is the one we're using specifically um, in a lot of cases. So we have those provided um, where there might be some ambiguity. But again, depending on whether you want solar years, side real years, um, they may need to be added separately. Well, those are just different units, right? Mm -hmm. A Gr Gr Gregorian year is a unit, the Hydra year is a unit. Mm -hmm. Those are just. But when we just say them? year as a unit, which one specifically are, of those are we using? Even the yeah, then year. it depends on where, where you live, what context. Mm -hmm. And in, you know, Western businesses, we mean the Gregorian year. But mm -hmm. if you're doing business in the Middle East, you mean the Hijra year. Mm -hmm. One thing we did have a crack at was Maybe. handling things like month. Because a month is different. Months is. But we month didn't is, solve that problem. Months so, is a special case. How about if I share my screen and you can see what's in there? Sure, an idea. Let's see. Oh, come on. All right. Are you seeing a Lego graph? Yep. Okay, the query here is uh, hmm. saying, let's look at the aspect duration, which is a duration of time. And um, so <clears throat> some that have no conversion factor mm -hmm. uh, currently. Um, and then the others are listed in terms of the smallest to the largest. So mm -hmm. it does it does have, this is what's in QUDT. Common year, tropical year, year, sidereal year. How do they um, define month? Ah. There's no Which one? Which one? They have they have one that's just called month if you can scroll down a little bit. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Hour, week, month. There you go, right there. That many seconds. Uh, I that yeah. but is that, that a next thirty day is, month or a thirty one day that, month? Where or is a that day month? That must be an Maybe answer. 
Must be an average, right? Mm hmm. Or it could be lunar. Shimaha should be documented. Yeah, I don't know. I don't lunar. know. A year divided by 12. So, or 13. Th the point is well taken that, you know, it is messy and mm -hmm. we haven't really even tried to look at whether QUDT got it right. The interesting thing about time, as a side note, recently the people are talking about setting up colonies on the moon, and they need to know what time it is. And time is different up there because of quantum effects and all kinds of stuff. So there's a new effort started to standardize time on the moon. This is a little side note. Oh boy. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I th I want to make a comment over here because I noticed that there was one comment. Uh, I just forgot the name who made it. They said within an or enterprise, it's usually an easier problem. And I think there's something important over here because the deep messiness of time, which I refer to, I realized comes that if you want to have communication between people of different backgrounds. So if you have people who live in, uh, say, uh, physicists who deal with astronomic times look at the sky and you have business people who deal with uh, years and uh, with days on and these vacations then you may have a discrepancy between them what makes sense for one party and what makes sense for the other party and you get this messiness in but if you have one group of people which have one goal like an enterprise then making a standard how they look at time uh, usually is uh, so it's quite clear which option to take sort of uh, what aligns with your needs and so it could be that within one organization uh, the question is not as difficult as trying to make universal uh, a system which works for everyone but if you want to try to make a system which works for everyone then the use case of time sort of they mismatch with each other uh, more than other measurements so i think that uh, taking time in a physical way which which you did from qdtt gives a good strong basis and then every organization which tries to solve their own problems but not the promise of any other organization it will be manageable it's not such a big deal i think but then it wouldn't sort of the months wouldn't match up with the physical months with a fact of seconds but sort of they, they would have to make their own standard i, I agree Completely. This is what Stephen said, and now I see the, see the face. So Stephen said that within an organization, it's not a, as, a, as a deep of a problem as a global system. Dan's got a question. Just uh, real quick. Um, at such an enterprise, what they can, one approach they could take would be to look at the GIST reference data file, select out only those particular reference bits that they want to use within their enterprise right. and then define any additional ones. So for instance, on that month being so many seconds, maybe they say, well, we want we have a different number of seconds or we don't even want to use that potential conversion. They just do not bring that into their enterprise level of data. So that's um, you know that that is one approach so that it's tailorable to each individual enterprise. This is what they have to do to express their own standard. They we use this, and we do not use something else. Which somebody somebody else uses, so that makes sense. And it looks like we're at time right now. Um, thank you very much, Katie. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for for coming and for the good discussion. And thanks, Katie. Have a good day. Bill, you're oh, unmuted. Bill, you're muted. I was going to say, we'll do the Holy Grail next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, good idea. Right. Thank no, you appreciate for your, your questions, Jericho.